Counter Narrative News proudly presents a new series on the founder and leader of the Black Panther Party, which is Huey Newton. Huey Newton was born February the 17th, 1942. He was born in Monroe, Louisiana, which had some of the highest rates of uh, racist attacks on black people and lynching of black people by white supremacists and violent white nationalists. His family moved to Oakland, uh, California in the second wave of the Great Migration post-Second World War. And there he felt that in school that it taught him nothing of use, but actually he was made to feel ashamed of being black, quote unquote. He founds the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense in October 1966 in Oakland with his comrade uh, Bobby Seale, which he met at Merritt College, where he studied different revolutionary socialist and Marxist ideas, including the works of Marx, Lenin Fanon, Malcolm X, Mao and Che Guevara. Uh, very much so he modelled the Black Panther Party for Self-Defence as a continuation of the leadership of uh, Malcolm X. However, the Black Panther Party was not the first Black Panther Party. There were several other uh, revolutionary black organisations that had the term Black Panther, not least the one founded by Stokely Carmichael, later Kwame Ture, uh, the Lowndes County Freedom Party, which had the Black Panther as its symbol, and it was largely popularly known as uh, a Black Panther Party or organisation. So there's a lot of complexities and controversies around Huey Newton, but he's a fascinating figure. He's a leading revolutionary socialist, anti-colonial leader of the time of the 60s and 70s. The legacies are very profound and great and continue on. But we're going to go into the nuances later on in the series. In this one, we're going to focus actually on the first, first Black Panther newspaper issued on April the 25th, 1967. It was called Black Community News Service, the Black Panther with the symbol of the Panther on there. We're just going to go through this because this is the first publication in the community uh, community that Huey Newton puts out through the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. And it's just, it's just important to start at the start, in a sense, in terms of the public uh, outreach and advocacy of the Panthers. So, to quote, why was Denzel Dowell killed? I believe the police murdered my son, says the mother of Denzel Dow. Brothers and sisters of the Richmond community, here is the view of the family side of the death of Denzel Dow as compiled by the Black Panther Party for Self-Defence, concerned citizens and the Dow family. As you know, April the 1st, 1967, Denzel Dow, Dow aged 22, was shot and killed by an officer of Martinez Sheriff's State... Uh, sh sorry, of officer of the Martin, Martinez Sheriff's Department, so read the newspaper. But there are too many unanswered questions that have been raised by the Dow family and other neighbours in the North Richmond community. Questions that don't meet the satisfaction of the killing of Denzel. The Richmond Police, the, the Martinez Sheriff's Department and the Richmond Independent would have us black people believe something contrary to Miss Dow's accusation. That is, her son was unjustifiably murdered by a racist cop. There are too many question, questionable facts supporting the Dow family's point of view. The questionable facts are as follows. One, Denzel Dow was unarmed, so how can six bullet holes and shotgun blasts be considered justifiable homicide? Two, why did the newspaper and police say only three shots were fired when the coroner's report and surrounding neighbours established the fact that six to ten shots were, were used and heard? Three, the police and the newspaper stated that the time of the shooting was 4.49am to 5.01am, yet Denzel Dowell's sister and neighbours in the area testif testified to hearing shots at 3.50am. Four, only Richmond police were first seen on the scene. Not until later, an hour or so, around 4.50am, were Martinez Sheriff seen on the scene where Denzel Dowell was murdered. Five. The police reported that Denzel Dow was running up and jumped a fence and ran to jump another when he was shot. The Dow family knows that Denzel had been injured in the hip in a car accident some time ago and after leaving the hospital could not run much at all, let alone jump two fences with a hammer in his hand. 6. The lot that Denzel was supposed to have run across between the two fences is an old car junkyard loaded with grease and oil. And why wasn't oil found on his shoes? 7. The coroner reported that Denzel Dow bled to death. Where was the blood where Denzel Dow lay? Denzel's sister remembers that night and says she saw very little blood. She said she never saw a pool of blood and yet the coroner said he bled to death after being shot 10 times. 8. Denzel Dow was found by his brother and friend and they noticed that no attempt had been made by police to summon a doctor or to save his life. 9. The family of Denzel Dow 
has been denied the right to see or have the clothes that Denzel was murdered in. They want the clothes to see how the many bullet holes the clothes have in them. The family was also denied the right to take pictures of his body so they could check for numerous bullet holes. 10. The newspaper came out with a statement of justifiable homicide two hours before the jury gave its verdict. The former, the foreman on the jury could not read. A biased jury of 10 white people and two quote-unquote Negroes protected the racist cop who murdered Denzel Dow. 11. The Dow family also notes a very important important fact. The cop who shot Denzel Dow knew him by name and stopped Denzel and hollered to him many times. Denzel Dow gave me, give me your identification. The cop had at other times threatened to kill him. The Dow family and concerned citizens have called for a grand jury investigation and are demanding that all law enforcement officers change their policy of killing people over property. On April the 18th, a group of concerned citizens went to discuss this proposal with Sheriff Young of Martinez. The citizens enumerated the area of doubt in question. Sorry, the citizens enumerated the areas of doubt in the case of Denzel Dow and requested that the officer who admitted doing the shooting be removed from the duty pending investigation. The sheriff refused to hear our request and we consider his action to be a racist disregard for the reasonable request of black taxpayers and citizens concerned with the survival of black people. Let us organize and defend ourselves. We believe we can end police brutality in our community by organizing black self-defense groups that are dedicated to defending our black community from racist police oppression and brutality. The Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States gives a right to bear arms. We therefore believe that all black people should arm themselves for self-defense. From the program of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, point number seven, what we believe. Why, why must black people organize? The murder of Denzel Dow, April the 1st, 1967, here in North Richmond. The murder of two black brothers a week before last Christmas here in North Richmond. The brutal beating of a black woman here in Richmond. The killing of George Thompson in Hunters Point, San Francisco in September 66. The beating of a 14-year-old girl in East Oakland in October 1966. These are only a few of the murders and brutal beatings by racist cops that have happened and been reported in the newspaper and are known about in the black community. Brothers and sisters, these racist murders are happening every day. They could happen to any one of us. Brothers and sisters, we must unite. Many other murders and brutal beatings have taken place without us doing much of anything, but let's stop it now with some real nitty gritty political action. End of quote. I mean, it's, it's an account that could that resonates and, 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 and people identify with the similar experiences in all oppressed communities and black communities the world over in terms of police brutality and deaths by racist police. Very common themes. So this was the first kind of, you can see here, it's around police brutality that Huey Newton and the Black Panthers are, are taking a lead around this in the community, advocating for armed self-defense. Now, Huey Newton makes it very clear subsequently that he was advocating armed self-defense in the in the initial phase of the Black Panther Party's experience to, to agitate and raise the consciousness of the people towards self-defense, but then he wanted to actually strategize and go into mass level organizing, which we'll come to in subsequent episodes, which will clarify going forward. So I hope that was of some use and interest. There will be further episodes very soon. Many thanks.